Now, one of the biggest questions that I get uh, with a lot of these antenna builds is not so much about the antenna. It's uh, a suitable enclosure to put the antenna in, especially a waterproof enclosure. A lot of people now are building uh, cellular antennas for the uh, 4G network, and they want something that's uh, waterproof. And it sprang to my uh, sprang in my mind the other day, and I started thinking on whether we can use one of these as an enclosure for an antenna. Now this is a, an old uh, halogen uh, security light. I picked up a few of these uh, some time ago. I was going to convert them to uh, LEDs. But uh, you can pick these up pretty cheap off eBay these days. And I'm looking at it, I'm kind of thinking you could fit a nice uh, single biquad antenna in there for the 4G network, especially this one, it's just about the right size. And because it's designed to be outside anyway as a security light, it is going to be waterproof. Now just quickly uh, looking at this, we can get rid of the glass obviously, put something else on there and make that waterproof, but we can also come in around the back, this is a uh, cast uh, metal, I don't think it's plastic, uh, I think it's a cast metal, especially around here. Um, where we can drill into and possibly get one of these uh, n-type connectors I do like to use n-type connectors if uh, I'm going to mount something outside drill a hole in the back there connect it up come through and have some kind of backward element on here and uh, possibly also building uh, a reflector as well rather than relying on the case as the reflector it's going to be much easier to do that obviously because we want uh, the uh, antenna to be a set distance away from uh, that back reflector so let me take this to bits and we'll see what we've got to work with now looking at the uh, case itself i think what i'm going to do first before building the main antenna is drill a hole in the back here to take this uh, n-type connector that i'm going to be using and also i'm going to need to flatten this area here as well so we get a nice watertight seal with the n-type connector because uh, as I say I'm designing this to be used uh, to be set up outside so we definitely want it waterproof. Got a hole in the back there and uh, we've got a nice snug fit now for one of these uh, n-type connectors flattened it off as you can see those uh, ridges so we get a snug fit I'll hit it with a bit of uh, white uh, spray paint before we uh, finally complete this but for now I'm now going to move on to the main antenna that I've chosen for this particular build. Now I thought I'd show you uh, another technique to uh, build a uh, bi-quad antenna um, that I haven't shown previously and it's to use some tubing instead of some plain old wire. Now the benefit of using tubing is you get more bandwidth so you cover a greater area. That might be a plus or a minus for you. For the cellular networks it's definitely a uh, plus for Wi-Fi, not so much. But uh, the materials I'm going to be using for this is this uh, Albion tubing. I've been getting this off a seller off eBay recently. He sells them in packs of three. And this is a uh, 4mm, a 5mm and a 6mm diameter tubing. And what I like about these is the 4mm uh, sits inside the 5mm. Uh, the 5mm sits inside the 6mm. Uh, really nice stuff to build with. Um, he also sells these in lots of different uh, sizes, diameters. He also lists them with uh, imperial measurements if uh, you still use the imperial system. But uh, it's really good quality stuff. This is uh, copper, I believe. Yep, definitely copper. I know it might look a little bit brassy on the camera, but it is copper. But uh, we're going to use for this build the uh, 4mm uh, thickness tubing for the uh, main driven elements on this and what I do is I do a small cut through there just enough to put a right angle bend in there you have to be careful because you can only bend this so many times before it snaps but it's a really nice way of putting together a bi-quad and uh, having that extra bandwidth with having the uh, thickness there as well now normally when I build a bi-quad I make a little tool to do the measurements and bend the wire but this one uh, you need to be a little bit different. I've got some calipers here. The measurement I'm using uh, for uh, the quarter wavelengths in this is 27.2 millimetres and that's going to be really nice for the 4G networks especially here in the UK. I think it's very similar all around the world. But 27.2 uh, millimetres and that takes into consideration also the diameter 
of the tube in itself. So I find this easier if we measure each one. Put a little mark just there and I go around a little bit as well because what I'm going to do I'm going to cut uh, half well, just over halfway with the uh, bandsaw on this you can also use a junior hacksaw you could use the Gemmel as well I've used the Dremel in the past um, the trick is with this is to be really really patient and uh, you just really take your time and as I've already mentioned try not to bend these too much once uh, you've got the cuts in there because you can only do it so many times and you'll snap it off i've never touched wood snapped one off yet but uh, just be really really careful with them and another good thing to have close by when you're building a bike quad is another bike quad or just uh, a rough one bent out of some metal because uh, you want to uh, remember which right angle bends go where otherwise it's really uh, easy to get confused and bend it in the wrong direction trust me i've done that many times even though i've built many many bike quads over the years so once you've got your first cut in there just bend it slightly not to, to a complete right angle just so you've got a picture in your mind that you can check against a, a picture or a, another bike quad that you've built so you know you're working in uh, the correct orientation and everything so next i'm going to put another mark here and put another cut just here and as I said you really get an accurate job if you do each one individually if you try to uh, measure them all off in one go take them over to the bandsaw you'll make a mistake and uh, you won't be as accurate and we're coming up to our uh, fourth cut now and uh, this is why it's really important to have an image next to you so you don't make a mistake so so far we've been cutting on this side of the tubing but now we're going to make this bend up onto uh, this element here so we need this next cut to be on the opposite side of these so we've got our elements going around that way and we're in this position now and we're going to make a cut on this side it's just a, a very easy mistake to make if you haven't got an image next to you and just keep double checking double checking all your measurements before you do your cut so now that I've got all of my cuts in there and uh, we've got about 80 millimeters left over from the uh, 300 millimeter length that we started out with I'm now going to bend it into the iconic biquad shape nice and carefully just taking my time And there we go. And of course, you could use wire for this if you didn't want to go to the uh, trouble of using tubing. But if you use wire, use a uh, 27 millimeter measurement, not the 27.2 millimeters. It does make uh, a bit of a difference there to the uh, overall uh, frequency response of the finished product. But uh, now what I'm going to do is find a nice piece of brass. I think this was PCB. Yeah, nice piece of brass for the back reflector. I think. So here I've got my bat reflector. It's a piece of uh, brass, 0.7 millimeters thick. It's uh, 110 millimeters by 65 millimeters. And I've just got my uh, elements here and I'm just positioning them, centering them up. And I'm going to drill a little hole just there. And then another little hole just about there. Now I just want to show you what I've done with the uh, back reflector here. Now the biquad is a uh, shorter design but uh, we've got the ground plane here. I've got a piece of brass tubing. Uh, I think this is two millimeters in diameter. Uh, I, you need to make sure that it's uh, more than uh, 12 millimeters um, because the distance between the main driven element and the back reflector needs to be between 11.5 and 12 millimeters no more or no less because it will affect the center frequency so I've got this uh, piece of tubing here soldered on to uh, the reflector and I've got my uh, connector here my end type connector with the coax coming out um, I've soldered the ground of the uh, outer braid of the coax onto the back reflector so all that is connected up now to this tube and I've got my center piece of coax coming out here at the moment it's isolated but we're going to be soldering the uh, biquad in place we're going to solder that to the uh, tube in there and then we're going to solder this piece 
onto uh, the bi quad here so it is a shorter design but that's what i've come up with for this particular build i mean you may come up with a different way of connecting all this up but this is the uh, best way i can come up with with connecting the end type connector through the back here and connecting everything together but uh, it's pretty straightforward a little bit of soldering tube on there and hopefully we should get a good connection i mean the the uh, main drill element itself is going to be held in place by uh, being soldered onto that tubing um, and then uh, this piece soldered onto here so all the stress is going to be on there but because it's in the enclosure it shouldn't be too much of a problem now I'm getting ready to uh, solder the main driven element in place I'm going to be soldering onto this first and uh, because as I said the uh, distance from the back reflector you've got to be really careful uh, between 11.5 uh, and 12 millimeters distance I've got a uh, couple of pieces of scrap wood here and a couple of pieces of uh, scrap perspex and the thickness of these two together make exactly 12 millimeters so I'm going to use those as my spacers so I don't have to worry about the distance I can just concentrate on soldering the main driven element in place on here so it's going to look something like that I'm going to solder the uh, uh, brass tube onto those two first and then come in and solder uh, the uh, inner core the coax in place can't do this on camera because uh, I'm looking down at it and so is the camera so uh, but basically just getting the soldering iron in there and flooding a good bit of solder on there I'm going to line it all up as well I'm going to hold it down with some masking tape so here we are now you can see it where it's all soldered up we've got uh, the main uh, connector here the center coax connected onto this side and then we've got the grounded short onto the ground plane here on the uh, opposite side and we've got the pigtail with the end type connector that's going to go through the back of that security light housing and we just need to fit it all in place now so we're now ready to uh, put everything together so i'm just going to thread that end type connector through the back and screw it in place and as for holding the uh, antenna itself in place what I'm going to do is just push it in wedge it up a little bit on the sides I'm going to put some sealant around there the same sealant that I've used on the uh, front cover now I've replaced the glass with some thin uh, perspex sheeting uh, it's about 0.3 millimeters thick it's uh, really thin stuff it's the kind of stuff you use for um, oh what's the thing I'm trying to think of now vacuum forming uh, so it's pretty thin stuff it's uh, pretty decent won't affect the signal at all but even though I'm saying that I'm just wondering whether you could just spray paint uh, the inside of the glass black and just put that back in its place I don't think that would affect uh, things too much either but um, this is what I've done so it's all sealed up with some silicone sealant so it's not going to let the rain in and I'm just going to put some silicone sealant to hold that in place and basically that's the antenna finished well the only thing to do now is to take it over to the test bench and uh, see what it's like see what frequencies it hits and see if uh, we've done our calculations correct and we have got a nice 4G antenna so here it is on the uh, test bench then hooked up to the uh, HP directional bridge so we can get really precise return loss measurements to see how well this antenna is going to perform. And here we are on the network analyzer. Yes, I've got a new screen now so we can see what's actually going on on the network analyzer. Um, we've got this first dip here which is beautiful. It's at uh, 2.682 gigahertz uh, round about where we want it 2.7 gigahertz for those uh, really quick uh, 4g um, basically 4g frequencies the higher the higher frequency is where you get all the speed from the 4g and uh, we've got a return loss of virtually well virtually one it's uh, 1.004 so that is absolutely excellent and if we go along to the next frequency response got it there at 2.2 gigahertz 2.265 gigahertz again in that 4g spectrum really really nice um, the return loss has gone up a little bit but not by a great deal at all 
and we've got a uh, third dip round about the 1800 megahertz there 1.89 gigahertz uh, 1890 megahertz and uh, again a return loss of 1.048 which is excellent just get it down at the bottom there beautiful again at those 4G frequencies not the higher frequencies this is where you get all your speed from but these frequencies are all incorporated into the 4G frequency so let me uh, just reset this a little bit and we'll take a look at those lower frequencies around 900 megahertz let's say 600 megahertz for uh, you know if you get any drop out and you need to connect for some reason at those slower speeds so here we are at the lower frequencies i would have seen like to have seen a bit of a dip around the uh, 900 megahertz region um, i think some countries do use that as a fallback but uh, again we're at uh, 600 megahertz there 6.5 megahertz 664 megahertz to be precise uh, really good return loss again uh, 1.048 um, you calculate the return loss of an antenna like this um, across an average so we saw the best um, return loss at that uh, 27 uh, megahertz 2.7 gigahertz there that's where we were aiming for with our measurements that gives us the best return loss and then we got you know good performance around 2.2 gigahertz and uh, 1.8 gigahertz and we're also seeing a nice uh, frequency response down there at 664 megahertz but uh, as i say a little bit disappointed we haven't got anything in the 800s but uh, again you can't have everything in life but uh, i'm really pleased with this antenna certainly uh, you know using the tubing does give you that extra bandwidth to cover those frequencies it'd be really really well it is a really really nice 4g directional antenna that will give around uh, 8 9 db of gain across the board of course it'll drop off a little bit those lower frequencies your best gain is going to be at uh, 2.7 gigahertz there so you know possibly at uh, the uh, 2.2 gigahertz 1.8 gigahertz you're going to have gain around 7 db and then dropping off at the bottom there so possibly about 5 to 6 db at that 664 megahertz frequency there but uh, again an excellent antenna so i think we'll end the video here over on the test bench then um it was going to be uh, a video where i just concentrated on this uh, idea for a housing but i haven't shown you that particular method of building a uh, bi quad before so i thought i'd incorporate that into uh, the build as well but hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video really quite a simple antenna to make and uh, as you saw on the network analyzer very effective over those frequencies at 4g but uh, yeah it's uh, been a nice antenna and i've enjoyed uh, building this one and hopefully you know as i said you can pick these up pretty cheap now the halogen ones they're being discontinued uh, this one came without the, the uh, element obviously but uh, you know for uh, four five quid you can get a nice waterproof housing for uh, your homebrew antenna i don't think you can go wrong really so hopefully you enjoyed the video and if you did please give it a thumbs up any comments or questions drop them below and i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one